Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of ClinBiz where we love connecting with you on the business aspects of clinical trials. So in today's episode, we're gonna be talking about the subject of managing the rising costs of investigator fees or investigator grants uh, within clinical trials. So this is going to be a two-part video series, so stay tuned for part one. Well, welcome back. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, so in today's part one of this two-part video series, we're gonna be talking about managing the rising costs of investigator fees within clinical trials. So why this is important is I'll let you know right at the beginning, just in case you wanna know if you wanna watch the entire video. Uh, this topic is very important because investigator fees, as many of you know, uh, really takes care of a large portion of a global clinical study budget for study sponsors specifically. Uh, and that's the, the, the glance or, or the perspective we'll take on in this video is really from the study sponsor perspective. Um, it's a very, very important cost category that gets a lot of attention from, from sponsors, from study sponsors, uh, especially the financial people, right? So it's very important to manage these costs. And because of, of the last few years, there's been a consistent rise in these costs. Uh, we've gotten a lot of questions from our community, from the ClinBiz community and others in the industry about what are some tips, some things to better manage these rising costs investigator fees. So in today's video, we're gonna be sharing the part one of this two-part video series because we wanna make sure it's digestible for you. And we're gonna be sharing three tips um, or three things you should really be looking at to manage better these rising costs if you're a study sponsor. And really if you're within the industry, it's very important for you to even know um, about these three tips as well. So let's get on to tip number one. So the number one thing, and this doesn't go in any type of order of priority or importance, and it is an exhaustive topic to talk about, um, but we'll cover a couple of things here. So number one tip I would mention is to evaluate your protocol required procedures and visits. Very, very important early on, um, even if you can do this at the protocol development, protocol design and protocol development stage, it's very important that you evaluate your protocol procedures and visits to really see what are some must-haves and the nice-to-haves, right? Um, I'm a big advocate of at the protocol design, um, maybe not the protocol design per se, but definitely within the development stage to have some type of a financial-minded person within those types of meetings, within those discussions, really looking at the protocol before it becomes final, um, to really look at and ask questions around what those procedures or visits are going to mean to your organization, you as a study sponsor, let's say, in terms of the financial impact. Um, it's very important to have those discussions. and. Why, one of the reasons why it's important that for this tip for you to look at your protocol requirements visits early on is because each of those procedures you're adding to your protocol, we obviously know if you're within clinical operations world at all, that each of those procedures and visits have an impact to the patient, the site, and just operationally, right? But sometimes teams don't think about the financial impact that one procedure added in there or one study visit is going to have financially to the organization um, and then eventually obviously to the entire um, ecosystem right, of uh, clinical trials and eventually it will impact drug pricing as well. Um, so it's very important to know um, if you're adding a protocol, a procedure or visit that you understand all the trickle down effects financially that also in, in addition to operationally um, but all the impacts it will have financially so for example you can add one procedure in there um, and what you're really doing is not just adding the cost to that procedure you're adding the cost associated with that procedure in terms of time and effort from let's say a coordinator or a PI uh, or a data entry person um, you're adding a couple of invoiceables in there potentially as well. So you need to think about those protocol procedures early on at the protocol development stage. Um, if you can have someone financially minded that really understands the impact of each of those procedures financially to your organization within those meetings early on, and that really will help you to better manage um, at least for your organization, the financial impact and the rising cost of investigator fees, okay? Uh, number two, 
Number two, I would say um, to evaluate your ROI from previously used sites. So we've mentioned this point in another video we made about strategic site selection, and this is absolutely critical that you do. As a study sponsor, um, many study sponsors actually don't do this, and it's really something you're missing out on, right? You need to be evaluating how your research sites that you you usually use or you've previously used for a trial, how they've done um, in terms of what they've delivered um, versus what they have promised you they would deliver. And I'm not just talking about number of patients, right? Because we know that this is not a perfect world, obviously, and things happen and sometimes people are not able to recruit what they intentionally, they intended to recruit initially. Right, and that's fine, but we're really talking about how they delivered all the other pieces in terms of communication with your teams, in terms of you know answering to queries, um, clean data that they provided, right? Turnaround times for um, CTA or budget negotiations. So, you need to be having this rear view mirror um, perspective when you're evaluating new sites for your study. Uh, look, all you know, most study sponsors, you you have this data it's a matter of capturing it somewhere initially and then making it systematic to look at that data before you begin a new trial before you make your site selection and look at how have sites done how what's the ROI right what is the return on your investment of those sites and how they've delivered in terms of the entire experience and the entire relationship they've had with you from previous trials and then really you need to be using the sites that are doing well the sites that are, are great to work with you have a great relationship with sites that deliver what they're promising obviously sites that do well in terms of recruitment of the correct patients and bringing those patients to um, having access to that trial and you need to stop using the wrong ones right so sometimes sponsors have an issue with going back to um, sites that are not performing well or sites that don't do well or or ask for a lot of things but really don't deliver on their promises right and also i just want to make a note before um you know because we have a lot of sites that watch our videos this all all of these tips go actually both ways right you can actually apply many of these tips to your negotiations with study sponsors and who you're selecting as well so this is not only from the sponsor side although this video is geared more to the sponsors right so that would be the second point evaluate the roi from your previously used sites and use that information to inform you on your future decisions of which sites to go to this is very important because you're going to be identifying sites that have performed well and you're really going to be using right your dollars as a sponsor to um, fund for the sites that do well that actually respond well within your trial and roll correctly um, you know enroll well and do correctly all all that's required within your protocol and you're really stopping the um, draining of that money to going from going to sites who are not doing well or sites who do not perform well um, that's really a big um, draining of that money that's going you know towards bad sites many times you know we'll call it bad sites because there's bad sponsors too right um, and you're not utilizing the funds correctly to go to actually well performing sites sites that actually um, return you know have a good return on that investment of time and, and, and effort from you as a sponsor um, and for the entire relationship so focus on the good sites and apply your funds to them and stop using those bad sites that's a clear way for you to cut costs and investigator fees is to really take a look uh, retrospective, retrospectively how you, those sites have done and only invest in sites that are actually performing well. That's a good way to cut down on those costs for sure. Okay, okay now on to point number three and this is our last point for this video again this, this is going to be a two-part video series we're releasing the next video next week on tuesday so make sure you um, stay tuned you subscribe to our newsletter so you are notified but here you have number three 
three. Now this one may not be very popular. I will give you a warning beforehand, but it is very important. And this is actually very important for both spon study sponsors and research sites, but today we'll just cover from the study sponsor side. And that is be prepared to walk away. Very important for study sponsors and you know all stakeholders in negotiations to be very clear at which point you're willing to walk away from that negotiation. Over the last few years, study sponsors have been more and more willing to cover all the different costs from research sites. I mean, I think there's still, you know, a lot of situations where those are not covered and need to be covered if they're appropriate costs. Uh, we've always advocated for that, for sure. But um, sometimes that has actually brought things to the other side of the spectrum for some sponsors. And sometimes sponsors are really not willing to walk away from a research site. I have to say it, it's very important. Um, and what ends up happening is sometimes you use some bad sites over and over and over again, and you end up losing your money like we spoke about in some of the previous points of this video. And sometimes that can also put you in murky waters as a study sponsor because you're more and more willing to cover um, costs that perhaps are really kind of in a gray area or perhaps not appropriate at all. Um, and if you're doing that, if you end up doing that, you're really putting yourself in murky waters. So you need to be prepared to walk away um, at a certain point and you need to communicate that very clearly to your organization from up top. You need to be able to communicate that. What is that point of walk away? What are things we're willing to cover versus things that we're not willing to cover? And really be, um, be very clear and empower your negotiators and empower your clinical team to make those decisions when needed. Um, very important because I know sometimes um, as an industry, you know, there's a big pressure um, to move things along fast and there's a big pressure to recruit and there's a big pressure to have a site on board and have it initiated that sometimes, you know, there's just that pressure and study sponsors are, you know, much more willing to work with that site that's negotiating rather than have another one or look for another one. But this is very important um, very early on for you to be able to first of all identify those sites that are performing well and use them, you know, all those things that we mentioned, but also be prepared to walk away when a request is not appropriate. And that needs to be very, very ingrained in your organization. And that's really gonna help you save um, lots of money from increasing costs, from those costs that sometimes you may approve um, for one study and you think it's just a one-off. It's not going to be. It's probably going to be for many other studies to come and it may even spread to different sites requesting that same thing and you're going to be put into a situation as a sponsor that you don't want to be in. Um, so it's very, very important that you be prepared to walk away and have that very clear early on and empower the people in your organization um, when they need to make that tough decision to make that decision. Again, this can also be used for research sites. Um, so we'll make maybe a video on that another day. Uh, so there you have it, a couple of those tips for you. We will have the second part next week. So you want to tune in um, for all those great tips as well. And I just want to remind you that we are actually having the ClinBiz virtual event in October this year, October 19th through the 21st. Um, it will actually cover many of these types of topics around contracts, budgets, payments, clinical outsourcing, and clinical business operations. It's going to be an amazing event full of the latest trends, the latest topics, the latest best practices. Uh, we'll be doing also an industry survey before then, and we'll be actually be showcasing live the results um, from that survey so that you have the latest and greatest around these types of conversations. All right. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you subscribe to our newsletter if you haven't, so you're always informed of the latest information we have around these topics. And until next time, take care. Bye-bye.